Welcome back to Middlefield Custom Sawmill. Today on the mill, we have a 25 inch diameter pine log. And I'll be sawing this into two by sixes because I'm starting on a sawmill shed and I need lumber. So I don't know if you can see it here in the camera, but the sap is just oozing out of this thing and it's been sitting around all winter. So it warmed up and yeah, <laughs> it's a good size log. It's not tiny. It's uh, 23 and a half inches down here at this end. And I've got it centered up. I've got the pith leveled. There you can see the sap real good there in the sunlight. And how all the wood is just sticking to it. <laughs> so yeah. I got my skidster over there. I'm going to try sticking you guys way up high on that so you get an aerial view this time, at least for the first cut. And, uh, well, see if we can add to this pile today. So there's some beams for the shed. The shed is basically, it's going to come off just a shed roof off of this side of my barn, just coming down like that, going up to the window. And then I'll pull the sawmill in this way. It'll give me a place to saw until I can build a real building, but for now, we're good. edge one out of that. Well, I'm getting a nice flat cut. Oh yeah, these big logs are fun. <laughs> if you like jumping around like a frog. So you remember I was telling you about the sap here in the log? It sticks to your blade, okay? So what I use to stop that is I take a, a pop bottle, I drill a hole in the top, and it's just, it's cooking oil. You just take some, Put a little cooking oil on there when the blade is spinning and cleans the blade right up and you just have to do that you know once a cut cut all the way through the log no problem so you'll see that working in a minute so i actually have i think 10 gallons of used cooking oil i just haven't filtered it yet so i took that out of the kitchen i'm still up on my spacer so the log is centered again i'm going to take a cap cut and then inch and a half so i can make Two by sixes. Yeah, I should be able to edge a two by six out of that. Oh, come here, you. Break! Yeah, I'm gonna take another half inch first, and then two by six. It's about 10:30 in the morning, and the smell of pine is great. All right, you come in with me. Ah, sticky. Oh, I got more than enough to cut a 2x6 out of this now. 
Just that little half inch makes such a difference. And uh, these edge cuts, I'm gonna go down an inch and a half now, make a cut. But these, the cuts on the edges like this, they give you the strongest two by sixes because this way, the wood's not gonna wanna bend. You know, it'll bend like this, but it won't bend this way very easily when it's at the edge because the grain is going. So yeah, good stuff. two by sixes. All right, so I got a little more wane here on this side. Another two by six. I'll be past the wane and I can flip it again. I'll have a nice square edge. These are 19 inches wide. I should be able to get three two by sixes out of that one. I'll check this out. I mean, that's pretty clear. And this is, this is not small. I mean, I put my hand at one side, there's a long way to go. Yeah, nice piece of wood. Yep, can you hear the singing? If the log rolls over, we'll all be dead. Don't roll. So, at this end, it was a sparing cut. But as you can see, it may have been a little heavy at this end. All right, change of plan. I'm cutting a 12 by 12 beam out of this. To finish going across the front at the end of that one. Cause I got to go 32 feet. That's 20 foot, 20 and a half feet. Plus 12 is 32. That'll be two more two by sixes, or maybe four more. All right, so Remy came out to visit the sawmill. Hi, Remy, how you doing? And Georgia's here. Say hi, Georgia. <laughs> gotcha. Say hi. Come on. Oh yeah, you got the sawmill. Each step is still a stir with him. He doesn't look, he just kind of takes leaps of faith. <laughs> Are you having fun with the sawmill? Do you want to run it? So Tori's here, Chris is here. Yeah, that's a good one, huh? It'll adjust it for you. <laughs> I know. You'll take all the nuts out, right? Yeah. You'll take the whole thing apart? 
All right, so I had a nice visit with the grandkids and I'm back out here sawing now. I don't know if you can see this, but here, I'll show you. So I've squared this up now. So it's good and square. But the reason I had to do that And if you look over here, I had to prop the bottom up. See how it's off the bottom there? Because this side, let's see if I can get it right, good angle here. That side wasn't real square. It, well, that is now, but the, the, not at the bottom. So let's get this, let me get it on the side here so it's square there. So you can see the bottom. It wasn't square, just trust me. I don't know how I did it. There must have been a piece of bark or something under it, but I'm about to fix it. So what you do is you prop it up so your sides are perfectly square with the bunks, and you cut a new top, and you flip it over, and you retrim the bottom. And then it'll be square again. So that's what I'm doing. It happens, you know. Hey. So I'm stopping it because I got to roll it over again. These are pretty big boards, man. Yeah, we got a little bit more here. Let's see what these dimensions are looking like. So I'm at 14, 14 and a half. So I could take some off this face. That'll get rid of this wane. And then some off the bottom. And I'll make that flat and perpendicular again. Yeah, we'll be good. So I really want to take this down to 12.
much quieter. So I did a one and a half, and then that was a three quarter to get me down to 12 inch thickness. Now I can roll it up, cut it at 12 again, and I'm good to go. So this one here, I can get two two by sixes out of this, which are really one and a half by five and a half, but you know. There's a three quarter inch. I don't know what I'll use that for, but it's a nice piece of wood. 14 inch by three quarter inch. All I gotta do is roll that up now. Yeah, we're good there. Right there you can see. You can see how far off that top is. So I'm gonna have to cut it here, straight across, square it up. I don't know if you've ever tried to move a 12 by 12 beam that's wet. They're not light. Here's that three quarter inch board. That is some pretty wood. And even where I stepped on it. <laughs> and the one under it's not bad either. Oh, sorry, I got sidetracked. I love looking at wood, so. It's like a lumber yard. It smells like a lumber yard. I think this is more scrap. I'm just going to cut it up. This is that wedge piece I cut off the top. And that's how you cut a 12 by 12 beam. Perfectly square. And get the tape measure. 12 and a 16th by 12 and a 16th. Sorry, I'm in the sun. There you go. So, there's a 12 by 12 beam, just like the one that's over there. I'll set this over there, and I'm going to do the 6 by 6s next. Or excuse me, the two by six is next. <laughs> six by sixes. That's what's on top there is a six by six right here. That one.
So, there's six two by sixes, one and a half by five and a half, store size two by sixes. That was pretty clean. I think that'll work. So I got six, I needed, I think, 14. So I got enough more over there. All right, there we got it. There's a 12 by 12 beam that's 12 foot long. And there are 14 two by sixes, you know, one and a half by five and a halfs. And that one board, whatever that was, three quarter of an inch. So I know what you guys are thinking, man, if I had a sawmill, I could save all kinds of money. And you could work out what the board footage is there and figure out what that's worth. But uh, I tell you, with a manual mill, that's a lot of work. That was a whole Sunday. I mean, yeah, my kids came over for lunch, but I've been working on this since 10 this morning. And it's now about 3.30 in the afternoon. So if you buy a sawmill, get like an LT35, because the manual mills, they are a lot of work. For me, it made sense because, you know, I wanted to stay active. And uh, this will keep you active, let me tell you. <laughs> That was a lot of work, but it was fun. So hope you had fun. See you next time. Oh, one more piece of advice for all you guys with LT15s. When you park it, you know, for overnight or for a couple of days, put this thing all the way up. That way, see that thing right there in that there are gas shocks, gas springs, and they lift the head. When you park it, you know how you can put it down there and have it in the transport lock? When you do that, the spring's under a maximum compression. When you park it with them all the way up, they're under minimum compression. There is a problem with these springs leaking their gas, so this is how to store it. If you're gonna park it overnight or for a couple of days, whatever, always raise the head all the way up. Just a tip, have fun.